This is it, kids. The Turbo Graphics 16 released in 1987 in Japan and 1989 in the United States. It's known as the PC Engine in Japan. We get games like Keith Courage in Alpha Zones and Blazing Lasers on this thing, developed by Hudson Soft and NEC. The Turbo Graphics 16 has some very cool games, but did not have nearly the lifespan or following of the Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo. What do you do when this is your competition? Two of the greatest game consoles ever created. Well, you don't have as many games. The TurboGrafx-16 has some nice exclusives, and it's cool to see a number of them on the Wii Virtual Console available for download these days. But let's take a look at this thing. It's kind of cool and very different from today's game consoles. You get these little cards. The Who card. Who card. How do you... I don't know how you pronounce that. And I don't care. I feel like if I insert this into an ATM, it will give me back cash. But it doesn't. If I insert this into an NEC TurboGrafx-16, it will give me back an ass whooping in blazing lasers. Alright, check this out. I think this is pretty cool. This is, this is where you insert the card, the game, into your TurboGrafx-16. We'll put blazing lasers in here. There's an arrow indicating what direction to insert the card, so you don't accidentally try to pull it in from this direction. Which doesn't work. I just... See, I tried it. You go like this. You take it, insert it into there, fits into place. It's even got a little handy space down there for your human fingers. Very clever. And then when you turn on the power, it'll lock it into place with a restraining bolt. Look at that. And it turns red, letting you know it's angry. The TurboGrafx-16 does not want this game escaping when you're playing it. This is where you insert the game controller. Notice that there's only one slot or one port for one game controller. Big drawback for this system. You have to buy a separate accessory to play more than one controllers. To play with more than one controllers. We'll insert the turbo pad into here like this. And there you go. I've previously reviewed the turbo pad. It's a pretty nice game pad. Feels like the NES game pad with slightly rounder edges and the tower of TurboGrafx-16. The TurboGrafx-16 is a very affordable game console these days, and the games don't cost that much either. It's not as much fun to collect for as the Sega Genesis or Super Nintendo, in my opinion, because there aren't as many games out for it, and, and the really good games are actually available on Nintendo's Virtual Console for the Wii, at least many of the good games. Now, if you go out to uh, places like eBay or virtually go out, I guess you're not really going out unless you go outside in your laptop and shop on eBay, but if you go to eBay, you can find a number of games at very reasonable prices. Take a look here at Keith Courage in Alpha Zones. The games that are well known on the TurboGrafx-16 are spaceship shooter style games and arcade games. The mascot for the TurboGrafx-16 that they were pushing was Bonk. Just in case you weren't sure what game console you have, it tells you in very bright lettering, TurboGrafx-16, where graphics is spelled with an X because it's cooler that, that way, I guess. Here's your antenna switch. This has no line-out AV output, so you can't just do uh, standard audio and video RCA cables out of this thing. You have to use an RF, RF switch like you do with the Atari 2600. So unfortunately, the video quality at the TurboGrafx-16 outputs is not nearly as good as the Super Nintendo or Sega Genesis. It's not to say the graphics aren't good, but you're not going to get as clear and sharp a video output. Let's take a look at the back of this thing. You can see they've made it smoother like that with this plastic molded add-on thing. If we take that off, which is a little tricky there. There we go. You can see it's actually a very small game console. Pretty light, too. There were some accessories that worked with the TurboGrafx-16, like a CD drive. And this is the power cord that plugs in back there and is tucked away neatly when you put the cover on. Here's the TurboGrafx-16 adapter to work with your television, very similar to what you would use for the Atari 2600. And you can see this is the same kind of plug. I, I typically use a VCR to pass the signal through an old school game console like this into a modern television, converting the signal 
to composite RCA video and stereo audio, or at least simulated stereo audio. And uh, you take this thing here and plug this into the side of your TurboGrafx-16. It's unfortunate this does not have line-out AV, like the Super Nintendo, which looks awesome. You know, the upside with the TurboGrafx-16 is that there's games available for it that you won't find on other game consoles. The downside is that you're not going to walk into one of those stores where you can buy stacks of Sega Genesis games and Nintendo cartridges and find TurboGrafx-16 games, or at least not very many of them. So I tend to tell people if you want to play some TurboGrafx-16 games, go to your Nintendo Wii and download them from the Virtual Console because they look amazing. And games like Blazing Lasers are incredibly fun. This would be just as much fun if it was on any other game console. It's just that this happened to be made for the TurboGrafx-16. And it's called Blazing Lasers. It kicks ass. Watch my review of this game. If you had a TurboGrafx-16 back in the day, it's easy to relive the experience because they're affordable today. They're not rare, but they're not exactly in high demand either. And look at this. The games come in little sleeves, keeping them safe, keeping them comfortable, keeping them warm. They play better when they're happy. And a giant thanks to John in Wisconsin for donating the TurboGrafx-16. He wants to make sure that I give a shout out to Ms. Thiel's Emerging Technologies class at Milwaukee Area Technical College. Let's talk about emerging technologies. You know what's an emerging technology? The TurboGrafx-16. I couldn't think of anything else. And that sounds like a fun class, too, because you could sit around and play TurboGrafx-16 and just talk about how it's an emerging technology. Do you have to be clear on what it's emerging from? I, I can't imagine that would, that would be important. It's just that this is technology, and it's emerging from behind my hand. There it is. Look at that. Emerging technologies, the TurboGrafx-16. Now I'm going to blow the crap out of some technologies in blazing lasers.